Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to do something special. We just officially crossed the 200,000 subscriber benchmark on the channel. It's a pretty big deal to me, and in order to celebrate, I thought that it would be a great idea to go through some of the stuff I have in my office slash Jurassic Park room, just to show you guys what it's like on my end to make these videos every day. As far as collections go, I don't really have a lot of stuff, especially not toys, but what I do have I consider to be pretty special, and it's something that I figured a lot of you guys might just be interested in seeing. With that being said, thank you. It's been one hell of an awesome three years, and yeah, let's go ahead and begin. So before I go into the actual office, I wanted to show you guys some stuff I've got on the outside. This is a JP 25th anniversary official print poster that was given out at the event in LA. I love it. <laughs> I think it's one of the coolest Jurassic Park posters there is because it's so different and it's got the 25 in the water right there. But uh, yeah, pretty cool. I've also got this, my 100,000 subscriber plaque. We've doubled that now, which is insane to me. I struggle with how I even think about this stuff. And I've also got this. Now, this is a page from the original Jurassic Park script. It is dated December 11th, 1992. It was gifted to me by someone named Marcus, a Hollywood actor who's awesome. He's a big Jurassic Park fan. He got David Kep to sign this for me, and uh, I'm incredibly grateful for that. That's straight up awesome. Now, I've also got a couple of these limited edition print posters for Jurassic Park's 25th anniversary. These were gifted to me during Christmas of 2018, I believe. And I think they're pretty cool. They're very different from what you would find in other posters. They're a little more, I guess, cartoony is the word, more comic bookish. And there's limited prints. Like, this is number 97 of 200. And I think this one is number 58 of 200. So I don't even think they make these anymore. But this is on the outside. Let's go ahead and see what is on the inside. All right, and I'm gonna do a quick sweep. I know it's a lot to take in, don't worry. I'm gonna be right here to explain everything, but this is where I make videos. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and start. So starting off the bat, I've got the most un-Jurassic Park thing in the world, which is a Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. Uh, I have it up here for variety's sake. It's not the greatest film on earth, but it's also not the worst, which is why I felt it should be celebrated. Down here, I've got a collection of Michael Crichton novels, uh, Spear, Pirate Latitude, State of Fear, Congo, Micro, Dragon Teeth, all kinds of stuff here. Now, I have other stuff from Crichton, obviously, but this is where a lot of his fiction is. And here we've got some of the cool stuff. All right, so a Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom print poster right here. The park is gone. Uh, obviously, it's not very straight. I don't have the best job at putting posters up. And we've got my man Arnold Schwarzenegger up top. And then we've got what I like to call the wall of nostalgia. So this is a bunch of stuff. The wall of nostalgia plus this. <laughs> I'm fully aware of the Phantom Menace's problems. You don't have to spout them off to Misa. But uh, I, <laughs> I still loved the movie growing up, so I figured I'd have to put it up on the wall. Michelle Pfeiffer, Catwoman, Batman Returns, and the original Indiana Jones trilogy, which I just straight up love. I don't hate Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, but the reason it's not up there is because there's my... <laughs> I can't put it there. Also got Laura Croft in Tomb Raider 2 for the original PlayStation. And I am actually a big fan of the design of Godzilla from 1998. Shout out to Yaroslav Kosmina, one of the people that actually worked on the Fallen Kingdom viral marketing. He did a lot of artwork for the DPG. He knows what's up. He knows this is a great design. And over here is where I legit actually make videos. Here we've got Trespasser Plan, my playthrough of that with Anne and her big bouncing boobs about to fight this Tyrannosaurus Rex. Uh, I love Trespasser. Again, fully aware of the problems, but I think it's a fun game. And we've got my computer, uh, pretty dusty. I buy power, got it from Best Buy. It's not really much to write home about. Neither is my mic setup, which is just a blue Yeti with a pop filter on it. What I have down here is a collection of just random things that kind of help for videos, kind of don't. This is an ACU patch gifted to me by Greg Wong, one of the people behind Jurassic World Exodus. 
He did a really, really cool job showing me around LA when I came down there for this, the first time I was ever in California. The 25th anniversary event that I was talking about for the original Jurassic Park. I got to go there when Jeff Goldblum was there, got to meet Colin Trevorrow, and uh, all that stuff is recorded up on the channel. And of course, right here, Site D authorized staff. Uh, Site D is not a thing, do not be fooled. That's just <laughs> like apparel for Jurassic Park that was sent to me. I've also got this cool replica of a Velociraptor claw. This was made for me actually by Marco Cavassa, who is a special effects wizard on YouTube. He's actually made a lot of stuff for me and gifted them to me. I think, could be wrong, but I think he worked on some of the props for Fallen Kingdom. And more on that in a little while. And right there is an old version of Engine's list. I believe I bought this from Paul Elder. Uh, it just goes through the dinosaurs that you see in the Lost World. And he asked me, whoever I bought this from, do I want the Spinosaurus in the list? Because it was optional, and I said no. It's not because, you know, I hate the Spinosaurus or anything, but it's because it's not on the list. And right here, I'm just gonna pull this out real quick. This chair with, whoa, look at that, an engine shirt. Who would have guessed? And here's just a collection of some books. This is the junior novelization for Jurassic Park 3, uh, The Lost World, Eric Kirby's Poop and Pee Adventures, uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, and a dinosaur field guide that is incredibly sun bleached because I had this back in the day. And last but not least, Conversations with Michael Crichton. A great book, highly recommend it if you are a fan of the author. And right here I've actually got some magazines for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. And these are obviously not usually out when I'm working, but I have them and I thought they looked cool so I figured I'd throw them in here. I don't know which one it is, but one of these has a god-awful size chart that is so inaccurate that if you obviously know it if you bought it because it looks it's just so off it's it's not even funny and of course uh by my computer at all times michael crichton's the lost world and michael crichton's jurassic park these are the issues that i bought uh back when i was 11 years old and i've kept them the entire time love them to death uh also got a random book here called Carnivore by Lee Clark. It's about a Tyrannosaurus Rex that hatches in Antarctica. It's insane. And another book that I actually highly recommend is Jurassic Park Collectibles. I use this a lot for the history of Jurassic Park uh, dinosaur videos. And as you can see, it's just chock full of all kinds of information. Look, there's the hybrids from 1998. There's Lost World stuff. There, there's just all kinds of stuff in here that's incredibly beneficial for me to just quickly skim through and say, oh yeah, I forgot about that. And now we've got the posters. So these come from a Lost World Jurassic Park poster book from 1997. Some of them deleted scenes like Nick Van Owen and Sarah Harding sabotaging the Hunter camp, Ajay Sidhu's death scene. One of my favorite posters, the Lost World Jurassic Park camouflaging Carnotaurus. I don't even think this is official, but look at that. That's just, that's awesome. If you look down here, there's another deleted scene from the movie that was actually in the trailers of Sarah going, isn't it great? Well, she's running from the Stegosaurus. Uh, we've got Roland and Ajay. We've got the Tyrannosaur family. And I've got Sarah down there petting a dinosaur. Up top, we have the greatest opening in all of the Jurassic Park films by far. Tyrannosaurus Rex Attack in Jurassic World of Fallen Kingdom. Loved it. That's not even a high-res image. I made that myself uh, by printing it off at Walmart. <laughs> I saw that in May and I was just like, oh my god, before the movie came out, I was like, it's awesome, I need it on my wall. Jurassic World poster with Owen Grady, Claire Deering, Irfan Khan as Simon Mizrani, and the kids. I really like the teeth in the background too, I think that's awesome. I've also got this big one of the Indominus Rex coming after Owen. I think this was the Japanese poster. It's sick. It's just so big and crazy. All this stuff going on there, look, it's like, ah! And of course, I got the Lost World Jurassic Park. This is obviously the massive, overgrown, 40-foot stegosaur scene. <laughs> and the Brachiosaurus from the original movie. This is a 1992-1993 Japanese print. On the back, it's got some artwork, actually, that looks very weird. Um, I'm not sure a lot of people own that. Right smack dab in the middle, I've got Ian Malcolm and the Gatherer team climbing up from the trailers that are going over the cliff as well as a map of Los Cinco Mortes and Isla Nublar. And of course, the iconic Tyrannosaurus Rex bull from the original Lost World Jurassic Park 
VHS cover, love it to death, had to have it on the wall. The greatest Pteranodon design of all time, in my opinion, had to have it on the wall, I think it's awesome. I've also got a, I think 1993 poster of the T-Rex main road attack. It's even got this great look at the goggles, like falling on the ground. T-Rex strikes, awesome. What, what year was this? Yeah, it was 93. That Stan Winston Rex, man, just looks incredible. Here we've got Owen Grady and Blue the Velociraptor. I'm not sure if that's a, that can't be an animatronic. I don't know what that is. It's an awesome promo shot, but I don't think that was ever supposed to be like, I don't think they shot anything out of that. At least I hope not. And then we've got Neem's poster for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Now, before he was hired to make an official poster, he made this. I think it's incredible. Uh, I love the shininess of the Fallen Kingdom poster. It really goes well with like the tone of the movie. And I just, again, saw it, had to have it, bought it immediately. And we've got the sick Triceratops scene from the original Jurassic Park. Another one I personally made myself. And down here, probably the worst one I made myself. Dennis Nedry getting attacked. Yeah, it's just so dark. Now I'm just gonna skim through this stuff quickly. Here's a Barbasol can. It was released uh, in Jurassic World. I just thought it was a cool limited edition thing. Here are some die cast figures from the Lost World Jurassic Park and some Fallen Kingdom stuff back there. Now you're not gonna see a lot of this stuff from me. I'm not a toy collector. This is just purely as like decoration, but I do have some stuff here that I do think is really cool. So here's an original Jurassic Park VHS. Uh, the front is severely, and I do mean severely, sun bleached. Uh, yeah, that looks nothing like what it's supposed to. So I just put it like that. Luckily the back did survive. Now what I have here is pretty cool. This is Star Wars, the original trilogy, unedited on VHS. The last time it was ever released like that. And uh, it's got a cool note on the back. See if you can see that a little bit better. Uh, in the years to come, I hope you, your children, and your children's children will enjoy not only this trilogy, but also the adventures yet to come in the continually unfolding Star Wars universe. Signed by George Lucas. <sighs> he was the best. I miss him. I wish you were back, George. I'm sorry what happened to the prequels and why you got upset and left. And over here, this is just a bunch of video games. Uh, I am a pretty avid video game collector, at least for old stuff. And usually when I don't have the cases, I'll go to customgamecases.com, at least I think that's what it's called, and I'll just have some made. But apart from that, you know, there's the Jurassic Parky stuff, Jurassic Park for the Super Nintendo. I can't stand that game. I think it's outrageously difficult, but a lot of people are nostalgic for it, so whatever. I've got these, however, that I do love, because I was a Sega kid. I've got the original Jurassic Park, which I actually bought this in 2003, I think, when EB Games was getting rid of all their cartridge-based stuff. I didn't have that one growing up. However, I did have this. This was the very first video game I actually ever got, Jurassic Park Rampage Edition. This is one of the most fun games I've ever played in my life. It's insane, it's ridiculous. Look, Alan Grant riding a Gallimimus but it's awesome. I, I, I love that game to death. And ironically, there's one more Jurassic Park game for the Sega Genesis that I didn't even know existed until 2015. Lost World. It's insane with how much detail is in this game as far as graphics go. A new state of terror, the blockbuster license returns with a vengeance as gamers assume the role of a bounty hunter in an elaborate hunt for the prized dinosaur. You play as Roland Timbo, player two is Ian Malcolm, the graphics on this game are really good. It was one of the last games released for the system, and I have it complete in box. So, yeah. And while not Jurassic Park related, I do have the Torak games for the Nintendo 64. Honestly, I love the first three so much. I just I can't stand to play anything else. I've even got Rage Wars. You know, I remember seeing this on sale or, you know, for rent at Blockbuster a lot as a kid. It, it kind of sucks, <laughs> not gonna lie, but, uh, it's Torok, it's from the time when I was a kid, so I just kind of had to have it as a collector. Now down here we've got a couple of Resident Evil books, so I'm a massive fan of that franchise, and if you didn't know there's books, there are, they're good. I also have a ton of PlayStation 1 games, which was my favorite console growing up. A few Jurassic Park titles in there, and uh, you can tell that I was a kid that lived in a trailer park in the 90s because all this NASCAR stuff. <laughs> 
So right here, obviously, we've got The Lost World Jurassic Park on PlayStation. This is my original copy of the game. I lost the holographic cover, but this is it, man. Uh, it's severely beat up, as you can tell. I've just had it for so long, it's probably scratched to hell. Later on down the line, I bought this, which is the special edition of the game. It comes with a new level and a much easier difficulty. This is like, this is the version you need to get. If you ever wanna play this game, play this version. Apart from that, I also have Warpath Jurassic Park. It's pretty good, it's kind of laggy in modern days, but I love this game. You know, I, I used to love just beating the hell out of other dinosaurs with it. Michael Giacchino, his second Jurassic project after The Lost World on PlayStation. Obviously, if you don't know who that is, look, he went on to score Jurassic World and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. So, uh, yeah. And then I've obviously got this. Can't talk about dinosaurs on the PlayStation without talking about Dino Crisis. Regina, the red-haired crush from my childhood. And, uh, yeah, this is basically just, look, it even says on the back, from the creators of Resident Evil. It's Resident Evil with dinosaurs. It's awesome, though. I mean, it, that's pretty much Jurassic Park, so, uh, you know, you just can't not talk about that one. Also got Dino Crisis 2, which I really like. It's, it's very different, though. It's more action-oriented. Uh, I think Dino Crisis and Jurassic Park kind of go hand-in-hand. Hand. If you're interested in ever playing these games, give them a go, although, or get an emulator and play it, I guess, in modern days. I think I have one more dinosaur-related game in the PlayStation, and, uh... And I'm not even gonna talk about that. Now over here is a Velociraptorix, which was created by Marco. Again, he gifted this to me uh, about a week ago, and I just, I love that hyper dinosaur as a kid. 1998, pretty much what the Indoraptor's based on. Had to have it again. Here's a collection of Lost World Jurassic Park finger puppets. <laughs> I did have the T-Rex, but my dog ate it. Here is some Mattel Snap Squad figures that were sent to me by the company. And I think the box is right here. There it is. Oh, snap. And then I've got this massive TV. There's little Benjamin looking out his window. T-Rex, he should realistically be screaming his head off, but it's the Lost World, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I contemplated on which Jurassic Park movie I was going to put on here while I was doing this. It was either between this or Fallen Kingdom. And I just kind of had to pick this one because it's my favorite. It's not the best. In my opinion, it does have a lot of issues now that I'm looking back at it, but I love it and I felt like I had to include it in this video somewhere. Now over here, I've got a ton of posters and this is a Mosasaurus and a Brachiosaurus print that I actually got in London when I went to the premiere of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I've also got a couple of other random ones down here. Uh, we've got this Carnotaurus one looks really cool. I love these ones though, these T-Rex and Raptors sort of tracker ones that you would actually have the hunters use. I think they're really, really cool. And there's a Mosasaurus skull up here, maquette for the Tyrannosaurus Rex in the film, Claire, Owen, the Rex, and I don't know what it is about Fallen Kingdom posters, but they look awesome in my opinion. And then right here you've got a poster in the closet, which is just Godzilla versus King Ghidorah. I just thought it looked cool. And if we go in here, actually, I know I've got a whole bunch of other stuff, but... I'm not so sure what it is. So, let's see, let's track over here. Huh, I hope I wasn't supposed to give that back. <laughs> and all across here is honestly just a bunch of comic books uh, from all kinds of different stuff. I used to read a lot of X-Men and a lot of Batman growing up and uh, yeah, I've got copies of all kinds of them. There is a NASM Essentials of Personal Fitness Training book back when I used to do that for a living. Now down here I do have some of the stuff Mattel sent me, which is a lot of figures. Again, I don't collect Jurassic Park toys, so I just kind of show them off on Instagram and they just kind of sit here as trophies <laughs> in my closet. Here's a giant T-Rex Jurassic Park <laughs> Lego set with like Ray Arnold, Dennis Nedry, Ellie Sattler, Muldoon. Well, no, M not Muldoon, John Hammond. But again, I don't do anything with it. It just kind of sits back here. We've got some other Jurassic Park stuff back here, mainly from the Lost World. And this, this is actually, to be honest with you guys, this is probably the most prized like memorabilia collectible thing I have. And I'll tell you why. When I was a kid, 
I was really young when Lost World came out and I was not allowed to see it in theaters, but what my aunt and uncle actually did right before my uncle died, um, I have very few memories of them, but what I do have is stuff like this. They actually gifted this to me, which is a cool cardboard collectible, as it says, and you just basically build your own T-Rex and Stegosaurus. And uh, not a lot of people even remember this existing, but I remember building this as a kid, and it's just sentimental value. You had to track it down as an adult. Nothing on the back. It's just, yeah, one of those things most people are like, that's what you like? But yeah, man, that's one of my favorites. I've also got a green screen, which I have yet to set up, and an official strategy guide for the Lost World Jurassic Park, which I had as a kid. It's the only way I actually had any enjoyment out of that game, because you start off as the compy, and it just sucks playing all the way up to the T-Rex, which was the hardest levels, by the way, but... Anywho, if we go to the back of this book, I think it's on page 81. Okay, yeah, this is such a snapshot in time. So this is where they gave a lot of interviews behind the scenes for the Lost World Jurassic Park video game. This is with producer Patrick Gilmore, and one of the things they asked him was, what do you love the most about Lost World? And he answered, some people will disagree with me, but I can call to mind instantly the scene in which the raptors swept into the abandoned engine village. And if you look right here, he actually elaborates asking, why would some people disagree with that? And he says, I've spoken with a lot of people who felt that the characters of the raptors as incredibly intelligent predators was violated by that scene that they should have been more shadowy and secretive. Personally, I felt that the rules were a little different on Site B, that the Raptors already owned it, and that it was their own territory, not an alien environment they had to be careful in. I also figured the Raptors in the Lost World were males, and were like male lions, more clumsy, single-minded hunters, while the females were more experienced and deadly. So it just goes to show you that back in the day, again, a lot of people don't really seem to believe it anymore, but the Lost World was kind of hated, man. It what? Why? Now, right here, I've actually got a few of the Jurassic Park comic books. Now, I have every single Jurassic Park comic book ever made. This is the nine-issue Jurassic Park Raptors series. The first half of Return to Jurassic Park, the greatest story outside of the films, in my opinion. Uh, the second half of Return to Jurassic Park, which sucks. <laughs> um, the annual Jurassic Park book where the uh, Dilophosaurus went to Costa Rica and uh, Jurassic Park Zero, the prequel. I also have this, which is the original movie adaptation of the first film. I have not done reviews for these on the channel yet. I'm saving them for Jurassic World Dominion. But I've got The Lost World Jurassic Park right here. It's pretty good. Uh, the worst comic book story in Jurassic Park history with Jurassic Park Redemption. They were really bad. I've got Jurassic Park Devils in the Desert, which was a step up, much more Tremors inspired though. And then the super manga cheesy Jurassic Park Dangerous Games with Dr. Double D. In my personal opinion, you can't go wrong with the first few issues from Tops. I mean, honestly, just get these series. They're really good. They have the story of Alan Grant and Ellie Sattler training the Velociraptors from Nublar. And they also have Robert Muldoon coming back from the dead. So, oh, and Biosyn and Engine fight each other, which is really cool. They're as bad as good as you can get until you reach Return to Jurassic Park, which is just so much stuff from the novels, it's not even funny. It, it's a badass story. See, here's the river chase. There was also the green flame arc, which I thought was awesome. They never continued on with the man, and it's a crying shame. Another awesome collectible I have is actually this piece of art from Yaroslav Kazmina. As I said before, he worked on a lot of the artwork for Fallen Kingdoms behind the scenes uh, viral marketing stuff. This is beautiful. He knew that The Lost World Jurassic Park was my favorite film of the franchise. And he sent me this immaculate piece of art he did for it. It is so cool. Every little detail from the film is in this piece of art. Roland Tembo, like over the trailers with the bull rex. It's, it, it's freaking awesome. <laughs> now the plan is to get this thing blown up and plastered on the wall. The high hide is even there. Look, it's up in the corner. But uh, yeah, that's kind of, uh, I, I love that so much. That might go in the living room. Last but not least, I've got a couple of these Jurassic Park mugs from Universal Studios Hollywood. This one I think is uber cool. It's got the T-Rex, Tyrannodons, the Jurassic Park logo and the Spinosaurus, look at that guy. We've also got this other one that's got some raptors and a patasaurus and the Rex, along with other animals that you kind of expect to see on Jurassic Park art. But yeah, that is pretty much it. This is where I make videos, guys. 
the TV's obviously not always on, but man, the posters are always here, and I don't know. It, something about walking in here just, I guess, eases my mind a bit. Um, yeah, that's all there really is to show you all. Now, honestly, guys, I love doing this. I think it's seriously the coolest job in the world, and it's something that really has given me a lot of freedom in life over the last couple of years. I'm super thankful to have passed this benchmark with all of you, and I hope that you'll continue to enjoy these videos in the years to come. I know the world is kind of chaotic and unpredictable right now, but I don't think we should let that stop us from just enjoying the life that we've been given and simply having a good time. So I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out to see my channel and hope you all had fun watching this video. No matter what happens, I'll be right here making more stuff for you guys to watch in the near future. Stay safe and stay cool, everybody. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game work as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Guys, it seriously means the world to me that you all continue to support what I do, and I never want you to ever forget that. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video, and hope that you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like, and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.